Good afternoon, everyone. We are glad you're here for Discovery Lab Online, where we believe in social distance learning. I can't wait for you to meet LaShawn Spotted Bear, who will be leading your Eggs Everywhere program. Let's transition over to LaShawn. Hi. Thank you for welcome, or thank you for coming to Eggs Everywhere. Uh, my name is LaShawn Spotted Bear, and I work in the science collections here at the museum. And our collections range from anything from rocks, minerals, and fossils, plants, and animals. And what I'd like to share with you today is a little bit about our egg collection. Um, why should we study about eggs? Well, what we can learn is we can learn about development and growth. We can also use learn about animals' habits, like where they lay eggs, uh, how many eggs they lay, why eggs are different colors and shapes. And so what we'll be doing today is we're going to just do a short portion about uh, the eggs in our collection. So we're going to look at a chicken egg. We're going to dissect it. We're going to learn all the parts of the egg and learn why they're important. Then we're also going to identify some of the eggs that we have in the collection and then also learn at what kind of offspring or, or will be produced from those eggs. So let's start off with our activity with the chicken egg. Um, and you're more than welcome to join me if you have a plate, a chicken egg, uh, a tool like a toothpick or even gloves. Go ahead and get those ready. And I'm going to get my lab set up. We've got a document camera so we can zoom in on the action and really check out those parts. So I'll just give you just a moment to get all those materials gathered and we can walk over and check out my chicken egg set up. So when I look at the document camera, I have a plate. There's my chicken egg. And there's my tools. I'm also going to put on my gloves um, because I want to actually get a better feel of the chicken egg. And also, um, we're going to be looking at the insides of the egg. So whenever I break it open, I want to make sure my hands are protected. All right. So if you got your egg ready, what I'd like for you to do is take your finger, and I want you to gently rub the outside of the egg. All right. Now, when I do that, I put my finger down very closely to it, and I can actually touch it. And what I notice is I notice that with my gloved finger, I notice that it drags on the eggshell. And why it does that is we're actually touching pores. There's little holes that cover this entire eggshell. There's about 10 to 17,000 pores that cover the eggshell. And that's because it allows for gases and water to be exchanged. So why an, while an embryo is developing or growing inside the egg, they'll produce a carbon dioxide and also water vapor, so that it needs to escape the egg, so they go through those little holes. Also, they need oxygen to grow and develop, so the oxygen from the outside of the egg will pass through the eggshell and pours through those holes to the developing embryo. Now, what I also notice when I put my finger on the egg, I notice that um, it's kind of wet, and actually, I can tell you where this has been. This has actually been in my refrigerator. Um, it's kept cold, but normally when uh, hens lay their eggs, they're held at a very high temperature, up to 100 degrees. So they keep them warm. And that way, if there's a developing embryo on the inside, it can grow. What I also notice about this chicken egg is I notice that the, what color it is, it is white. Now, not all chicken eggs are white. Sometimes they can also be brown. Depends on the breed um, or type of chicken. And what I also notice is that there's some little spots on there too. So it's not totally solid color white. Sometimes you see little gray spots as well. All right. And what else I notice is I notice that the, sh the shape of the egg. So I know it's kind of smaller at the top, wider in the middle, and then smaller at the bottom. So an oval shape. So now that we've learned a little bit about the eggshell, has it how have those pores and also the shape of the egg, I want to check out what's on the inside. So what I need to do is I need to crack it open and I'm going to pour it into my plate. And we're going to look at the inside of the eggshell and then look at all the parts of the egg inside. I'm going to gently remove it. And then I'm going to just tap it on the table, and then I'm going to pour it right into my plate. And you can do the same. So I've made a crack. I'm going to take my thumbs right where that crack is, and I'm going to gently separate the eggshell and let the contents pour right on the plate beneath it. All right. So this eggshell is actually made of calcium carbonate, and that's really important because that's what the chick will use to strengthen its bones. And you may also notice when you cracked open the egg that if you take the eggshell and just pull on it, you may notice it looks like there's some paper on the inside. What that actually is are membranes. They have two sets. There's an outer and an inner, and they're stuck together. And that's what lines the inside of the eggshell. 
So that helps to make sure that it, the, the egg doesn't dry out and also helps to keep bacteria from getting into the eggshell. All right, I'm gonna set my eggshell just on the side of my plate. And now what I'd like for you to do is we're gonna take a look at all what, what came out of our eggshell. So as we look, we can see lots of things. I see some liquid stuff. I see some colorful things. So what I want you to look at now is look at what we call the yolk. And that's gonna be that big yellow ball, or it may be kind of orange or red. And that also depends on the diet of the chicken. And so as we look, I want you to look closely and see if you can find a little white spot. So I'm gonna actually point to it with my toothpick. So I see a little white spot. I'm gonna circle it right here. You can see it right above there. And that's actually called the germ or germ cell. And that would be the developing embryo. So the germ cell or the embryo sits right on top of the yolk. And that's really important because what that yolk is going to do, it's going to provide it uh, fats, minerals, and vitamins. It's going to be the food for the embryo. Also, I notice there's some clear stuff. So I'm going to run my toothpick through it. And then there's also some kind of thicker clear stuff. And when I tug on that, you can see how the yolk moves as well. So these two pieces are called albumin. We have thin albumin and thick albumin. And this provides protein for the chick. So all what we see is food. Now the last thing I want you to look for is look at those strings. You may see there's stringy stuff hanging from the yolk. There's one on one side and there's a little bit on the other side. These are called chalaza. That's my favorite vocabulary word, chalaza. And as you tug on them, now you can really see how the yolk moves. And it's because these chalaza are actually connected to the yolk. And in one of my classes, one of my students said that, hey, it looks like it's like be like a seat belt. And it is because it's tied to the ends of the, the, the yolk and it makes sure that the yolk stays right in the center of the egg. So if this egg ever rolls or tumbles, the embryo, which is sitting on the yolk, doesn't bounce all around. But again, these are just protein strands. All right. Now, you know how we looked in the inside of a chicken egg. We noticed that there were those membranes just on the inside. Well, there's also a membrane that holds this yolk together and you can tell. You can't really see it because it's clear, but if you take your toothpick or your tool and you gently press it into the yolk, you'll break through that membrane and then you'll see the yolk begin to ooze out. So everything you see inside this egg is food for the baby chick to grow and develop. And the egg, eggshell is great protection. So it's kind of interesting to see how everything is all kept in the eggshell all that's necessary for growth, but then how also the egg is very delicate for the chicken to pick out. All right, so it takes about 21 days for the chick to develop inside the egg. And like I said, it's kept at a high, high temperature so that the it's, it's able to grow. And that's what's kind of interesting about animals. Sometimes it's dependent on the temperature, whether it's a male or a female, which is kind of cool, especially in reptiles. So we can learn about how the animals care for them, like the chicken, or maybe one that doesn't. And I want to show you two examples of that, where the parents lay their eggs and just leave them alone. All right, so I'm going to take off my gloves. And since we have quite a variety of, of animal eggs, I'm going to slide this next one in, into the document camera for you to see. And I have to zoom in on it because how tiny these eggs are. In fact, we had to place them on a red dot so we wouldn't lose them. All right. So I'm going to actually hold my finger up next to it. And you can see that I could probably scoop all these eggs and place them right on top of my finger now. They are so small. And a lot of times people ask us, where do we get our specimens? And many times people bring them in to us. And actually a gentleman was working in his garden and he found these little dots all over his tomato plant. And he noticed that his tomato leaves were be being eaten. So we tried to figure out what was causing it. So I took a few and some tomato plants, leaves, and then we raised them. And what we noticed is that there was a little uh, larva that had come out. In fact, it looked like kind of like a, like a thread off your clothes. And let me show you how big it gotten to be. So after a while, it becomes this large. So I call it a larva. You may call it something different. You can also call it a caterpillar. 
Now we had to figure out, will this caterpillar turn into a moth or a butterfly? And what we noticed is that it dropped down into the soil and then actually made a pupa. And that's like a little covering that goes around its body where a major change happens. It'll metamorphose. And what, we came, what it came out to be is actually a moth, a sphinx moth, just like this. So everything you see here is part of our collection. It was once living, but it, now it's not alive, but it is real. So this is one of the animals that lays eggs on leaves because it makes sure that there's food around whenever this caterpillar um, hatches out in order for it to grow. And you can kind of tell that this caterpillar is kind of a green or yellowish color to kind of blend in with the leaves around it. All right, I'm gonna show you one more animal that lays eggs and leaves them alone. This one you'll have to look into a jar. So this is one of the jars we have at the museum that we keep our specimens in. And when, I, when it was first brought to me, I was trying to figure out exactly what they were because they look like three large eggs. But I did a little research, I noticed that those aren't individual eggs, those are actually egg sacs. So if we looked inside of them, we'd see little tiny eggs, about 150 to 250 in each sack. So we'd have like 150 in this first one, 150 in the second one, and then 150 in the third one. So just in this one little jar, we could have 400 and 50 little animals hatching out. And you may already notice what it could be. In fact, when you look in my jar, you can see that there's a lot of webbing and there's little tiny bodies. And what those are are actually spiderlings. So what we did, we took them from a lady who was doing some spring cleaning a while back. And she noticed that these little round things were up, kind of tucked up in the corners. And when we brought them out, we checked on them. We noticed that they were actually the spiderlings or the baby spiders of a black widow spider. So it's kind of interesting that she had them and she wasn't really sure about them, but what's neat is that the black widow spiders actually kind of hide out. So they are in places that um, people normally don't frequent. So since she didn't get in the corners of her garage very often, they found that was a, the black widow found that it was a safe place to have her egg sacs and her spider web. All right. Now the last one I wanna show you, I'm also gonna put on the document camera. We're gonna use our Petri dish just to hold it. And many a times what we have is our specimens are in a liquid. It's actually an alcohol to help preserve them so that we can keep them for a while to study them. So I'm gonna scoop this out and I'm gonna put it right inside my Petri dish. All right. Now take a moment and take a look at this egg. It's very large, much larger than the moth eggs that we saw and also the spider egg sacs. In fact, I can put my finger up to it. It's about half of my pointer. Yeah, so it's maybe it's about two inches long. And that's what the key is, it's long. It's not round, it's not oval like the chicken egg, but it's long, it looks like someone has stretched it out. What I notice is when I gently put it into the plate, it's also very soft. So it doesn't have that hard shell like we saw with the chicken egg. Now we have to imagine what the shape of the embryo could be on the inside. That's what, that'll give you a clue of what animal will hatch out of it. Can you imagine something long, maybe curvy? And what's neat about this is when this animal lays eggs, she lays them in a clutch. So she lays them all together. And that can range from 10 eggs to 30 eggs. And again, this is an animal that lays her eggs and leaves them alone. What's also interesting is how this animal gets out. Whenever it gets ready to, to hatch out, it makes a cut in this very soft egg, and then it slithers away. Does anyone have an idea of what that could be? Well, let me show you. Besides preserved specimens at the museum, we also have a small living collection. So what would hatch out would be something like this, it would be a snake. So we have, um, this is Albert, our albino corn snake. And he did hatch out from the egg, except he wasn't this big. Whenever snakes hatch out, corn snakes are about um, 12 inches long. <laughs> 12 inches long. But you can see that he has grown quite a bit. It can range from about two feet all the way to six feet. <laughs> 
So I find it really fascinating to study the eggs that maybe most people don't think about or even know that they are around them, whether they're in the garden or in your garage or maybe buried somewhere or even all together like in a hollow log is where the, the snake would put them because it's nice and warm. All right. And also we can learn about how these animals develop. We can see their growth, whether it's through metamorphosis and a big change, what we call a complete metamorphosis, where they go from the caterpillar to a chrysalis or pupa to an adult. Can you think of another animal that would go through metamorphosis that's not an insect? Ah, it's the amphibian. It's a frog or toad. So they go from those little eggs to a tadpole, and then they start to change. Their body totally changes where they have that big head and that long tail to where the tail gets smaller and then the legs come out, and then they develop into the adult frog and toad. And then we have animals like the snake, who just get longer and longer and longer. Well, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask about any of the animals we have here, or any kind of eggs that you've seen, or just uh, go ahead and just let me know on, uh, on live, chat. live chat, and I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and I'm always still learning, so I may not have the the right answer, the, the answers for you, but I'll definitely check them out. All right. So what is the largest animal that comes from, what is the largest egg and the largest animal that comes from an egg? That's a good question. So the large, it just depends on what you're talking about. I can actually show you the largest bird egg that's living today. We have it in our collection. Can anyone think of what that is? The largest bird egg. So let me put uh, Albert down. And we actually have the ostrich egg. It belongs to one of the largest birds that live today. In fact, you can see how large it is compared to my hand. It's huge. What's interesting about the ostrich and their eggs, they don't, lay, they don't just lay one egg. Um, they can lay up to 12, but it's not by one bird. Sometimes as many as three females will gather together and lay their eggs in the nest. And it's not like a nest that you would think that would be up in a tree. It's actually on the ground through all those grasses. And they take turns sitting on the egg. So that would be the largest bird egg of the animal that lives today. All right. Do you want to show them the baby ostrich? I we also baby have a baby ostrich. ostrich. So this is our baby ostrich. You can see how different that it looks from the adult. Because when I think of adult ostriches, I think of them being uh, black and white. And what we're actually looking at or seeing is actually the male or the boy. Now, when we look at this guy, all males and females are the same color when they're little. So you can see that they have like brown stripes and spots and their feathers are brown, different shades of brown. And as they get older, then that's when their feathers will change. If it'll be a female, they're gonna kind of look similar like this. They'll have that light brown color and some gray. And if it's the male or the boy, they're gonna have those black and white colors. Does anyone know why the female, the adult female has these brown colors? Part of it has to do with camouflage. Yeah, so if they're sitting on the nest, if they're in, in the grasses, then they want to blend in too. So you can imagine those tall grasses, it'd be really hard to see those females that sit on the nest. And the babies are protected while they're walking around because of that same coloration. Thank you for the question. I'm gonna set our baby ostrich right here. Another question we have are, why are robin's eggs blue? That's from Amanda Wilson Sun. That's a good question. You know, I am not exactly sure, but I do know that a lot of animal eggs have different colorations. Kind of like the ones that we looked at, they were pretty much solid colors, but the bird eggs vary. So they have bright colors like the robin's blue egg. Sometimes they have a dark brown and gray like a killdeer's uh, egg that you would see on, that, well, that would camouflage on the ground. Um, and that's all produced on the inside of their body. They lay all those layers down. You know how we saw the yolk and the albumin and uh, the shell? It's all created in there. So. That's kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they are blue though. So that's going to be a, a question I need to look up. We can send that on a live chat later. We can add it to our, our YouTube Perfect. channel. Perfect. Another question um, from Arian. What if the larva falls out? Can the 
Can the insect fall out? The larva falls out. Can the insect fall out? I'm trying to think what. Hmm. And Erin, if you want to resend that question, it could be that I'm reading it wrong, but if you could resend that question, that would be great. All right, so keep those questions coming. Um, I'm trying to think what else, oh, the neatest thing that we have at the museum that whenever um, we have a chance to come visit is you need to take a definite look at our dinosaur eggs. I think you'll be very impressed. They're pretty large. They're, I don't know, about two feet large. And then we also have some that look round as well. They're gonna be in our dinosaur gallery. And that's what's neat about having, we're working in collections is that not only um, do we care for them, but we also get to put them on display for you to learn and then also for other students or researchers to come and, and observe and, and check them out. So we all get to learn, which I think is so neat to have these collections around us. Well, let's give LaShawn a big thank you for doing this program thank for you. us. We are so glad you guys joined us uh, because we believe that social, we live in social distance learning. And so that is really um, our goal for the next few weeks is to find ways to connect with you while you're at home. The, these uh, programs will be archived on our YouTube station, so YouTube channel, so you can send friends to the, to, the, to the channel to learn more. If you're free tomorrow at 11 a.m., we're doing a class on urban animals with uh, Rebecca Reed. And so come back to learn more about some of the urban, life, urban wildlife that you can find near your home. Again, thanks so much. We'll add uh, answers to our live chat and also in our comments section. If there are educators with us, we'll be adding the text connections for this program um, underneath the program in the comments section. Thank you guys so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.